Today we will be demonstrating proper radiographic technique for the molar bite wing. The bite wing radiograph will capture both the mandibular and maxillary crowns in one image. It is primarily used for detecting interproximal caries and determining bone levels. The molar bite wing should capture the two distalmost molars in the mouth, as well as two millimeters of bone distal to the most distal molar. You should begin any radiograph procedure by properly setting up your unit and gathering your supplies. Begin by placing a plastic bag over the patient chair and cover the exposure switch with barrier tape. Then lay out a blue patient napkin to arrange all your needed supplies in cassette. Gloves should be worn when handling foster plates and instruments that have been in contact with the patient, but make sure that you do not touch the cup used to carry the foster plates. This cup should be kept off the blue napkin to avoid contamination, so it may be used to carry the plates to be developed. For molar bite wings, you will use the XCP rod that is straight. It should next connect the horizontal bite block. Finally, attach the positioning ring so that it is not offset. Ensure that it is the correct one by looking through the ring and making sure it lines up with the bite block centered. For a bite wing radiograph, you use a size 2 phosphor plate. When placing the phosphor plate in the bite block, you want to be sure that the copper X always faces the patient and the black side faces the operator, with the EP A on the bottom. Before taking any radiograph, you also want to be sure the x-ray unit is on and set to the correct setting. Today we will use the adult setting with, and the bite wing setting. Make sure you ask the patient to remove any items that may interfere with the exposure, such as glasses or jewelry. You are now ready to take your radiographs. Position the patient so that they are sitting tall with their head properly supported by the headrest. The chair should be at a height that is optimal for the operator. Be sure to place the thyroid collar around the patient's neck or a full apron if the patient is a child or pregnant or if the patient should request it. When placing the film in the patient's mouth, have them open wide, being careful to avoid their tongue. The film should be placed far enough back to capture two milliliters of bone distal to the last molar, but not so back as to cause patient discomfort. For the molar bite wing, it is important to open the contact between the maxillary first and second molar. In other words, you want to avoid causing any overlap of these teeth on the image. To accomplish this correctly, position the bite block so that the line is parallel between the contacts of these teeth. Once you have the phosphor plate with the XCP instrument positioned properly, have the patient slowly bite down. Make sure the patient fully bites down to secure the instrument. Move the positioning ring forward up to the patient's face. Ask them to remain still while you position the PID. When positioning the PID, a horizontal angle parallel with the contacts between the maxillary first and second molars is ideal to correctly open the necessary contacts. A vertical angle of 5 to 10 degrees should be used or align the PID so that it is parallel with the XCP rod. Be sure the PID is set to take a horizontal image and not a vertical one. And aim it through the ring so that it lines up correctly with the horizontal marks on the ring to avoid cone cut. Once you have the patient x-ray unit positioned correctly, Make sure the patient understands they cannot move. Leave the room and hold down the exposure switch until the beep stops. You may then go back into the room and remove the foster plate and XCP from the patient's mouth. Remove the phosphor plate from the blight block, dry it with a tissue, and place it in the cup. This process is repeated on the opposite side of the mouth. Once you have taken all your radiographs, you are now ready to process the images.